Hi, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, hi, everybody. <clears throat> Hello. Go ahead. So this thing is this thing is going to uh, faint, so that it's not burning too much battery power. But I have it plugged. <laughs> Hello, I can hear you. you. Janet, try now. Okay, I'll hang up. Okay. okay, well, can you hear me now, Ken? Have we been on air? Janet said we weren't on air, but can you hear me, Ken? I hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Uh Uh-huh. I sure do. How about that? Well, uh, Ken, have you been able to hear me on the show? Have I been talking to myself? or (laughs) Who's here, area code 216? Can you hear me, area code 216? Yes? No? Okay. Well, Ken, go ahead and introduce yourself. And uh, we'll get the show started. I thought uh, (laughs) it's been going for a while. Can you hear me? Ken? Ken, is that you? Well, this is is Ken. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, you're coming in on a 216 number. Is that your wife? No. (laughs) My screen says I'm on the 7207. Ken, is that you? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I can hear uh, an well, echo. I'm, I'm not sure exactly can you what's hear going me? on. Yeah, yeah now there you can are. Can you hear me, TJ? Okay. Yes. Yeah, for earlier, there was nothing. I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear anybody. So, okay, we're I couldn't, here we are. Same. I couldn't hear anybody either until just now. That's very interesting. Ooh. All right. It's sort of spooky. Well, we're not going to have, uh, apparently, we're not going to have Terry on tonight, but uh, I guess she can come on another night, and that's okay. So we're going to do Allied Command Secret Space Paranormal Researchers. All right, folks, if you've got copy up to this time, thank you for being patient. If you haven't, we apologize, but we'll start. Okay, this time we are CE5 Contact the Experiencers, and this time I have Ken R. Johnston and Janet Carolesson. So, Ken, let's go ahead and introduce you and uh, see if we can't get started here. Go ahead, Ken, introduce yourself right. if you don't mind. Oh, thank you very much, TJ. Um, those that may have known me or heard of me, uh, I was one of the first four civilian astronauts on the Apollo program and um, in charge of the data and photo control department that uh, kept um, all the information and the pictures around the moon and everything that was sampled and picked up and as well as sending the samples out. Well, I thought I was right on the very, very front edge of everything until the last few years I realized that uh, there was a lot more that we discovered on the moon and on Mars now that was all part of the secret space program that I didn't know about. So since I had all the records and all the documents and everything else, I got dubbed with the title the NASA whistleblower. Well, I didn't ask for that, but uh, if that's what it takes to get the rest of the truth out so we can all get a chance to know where we're at, on the space program and with contact to extraterrestrials, I'm up for the game, and that's why I'm here. Thank you again for yep. helping us tonight with our Command Secret Space Paranormal Researchers. Janet Carolesson, would you please introduce yourself and tell us after that about your Aquarian radio uh, in our syndication? Go ahead, Janet, please. Hi. Uh, aloha, everybody. I'm Janet Carolesson. I'm coming to you from Maui, Hawaii. And, um, yeah, it's interesting that Ken is talking about the secret space program. Um, The secret military has been in operation, you know, the breakaway civilization for as long as uh, there's been history. (laughs) You know, we've always had this part that is in the know and the other part that's uh, hidden from the, the general society. So I'm uncovering a mystery that I had where I was working for the military on Johnson Atoll. So I had an incident. It's called a My Labs incident, and uh, we're going to be talking about that in our upcoming book that TJ and I are co-authoring, called Portal Stargate, and that'll be out probably by fall of 2019. We're working on that. Might be even summer. Just depends on a few factors. 
But uh, I've been an experiencer, lifelong contactee uh, since the crib, probably before. I have memories of making a choice coming down into 3D physicality, and I thought I was crazy for a while, but I encounter many other people that have memories of who they were before, and we often explore that hypnosis, past life memories, concurrent lives on other planets, other dimensions, vibratory frequencies. So that's what I bring to the table is a different perspective. But Ken was in the NASA program, but he's uncovering his involvement in the Secret Space program. And we're encouraging Teresa J. Morris to come forth with her episodes and encounters she had with ETs and her involvement in the uh, we call it the secret space program for the lack of any other term, but it's basically what um, Richard Dole's been talking about, the rich, the breakaway civilizations. It's, it, there's different terms over the last 20, 30 years on what to call this, but it's basically a secret um, system that hasn't been revealed to the general population. But now I think it's a time uh, to get it out, mainly because they're letting it come out. Oh, I think on some level they're hiring us experiencers and whistleblowers and secret space pe- program people to come out and tell the truth because years ago after Roswell they screwed it up and now they don't know how to correct it. So they're letting us correct it. Okay, back to you, TJ. Well, uh, depending on who you are, if you're interested in your cosmology uh, we'd like to hear from you and we are forming a group of people that can support each other in their findings of fact and their truth and their experiences and so we welcome anybody out there that would like to feel like they're a paranormal researcher it's a global qualification for people in all countries uh, all around the world uh, the paranormal research it sounds a little more uh, all encompassing. So that's when we throw in ufologist and alienologist, cryptologist, cryptozoology. Uh, wow, I can't uh, tell you how many people that talk about things like uh, submersibles, uh, USOs, and uh, we've got some people that come in and speak at events around the world. And Janet and Ken have both uh, been at these events. I only been at um, writers' conferences, mainly Mid South Con, and then uh, well, I did one here locally, New Horizons. So I've done Mid South Con in Memphis at the Hilton, and New Horizons here at the uh, uh, Navarre Conference Center. And I'd like to have one with Janet and Ken again. I met both of them uh, together, matter of fact, at the same time at the Mobile uh, Mars Anomaly. Research Society, MARS, M-A-R-S, with Lewis Reinhardt, who sponsored that at the University of Southern Alabama, USA. So uh, Janet and uh, Ken and I got together after uh, that meeting and decided to see if 12 to 13 people wanted to work with us. And some of them, if you're out there on Facebook, are still with us and uh, know who you are in social media. And we decided to keep this going and uh, so Ken is going to be helping us, and so is Janet. Now, uh, Ken, would you like to talk about yourself or how you think we should go about doing all this? We've skipped two years, but what's time anyway? Time, space, and gravity on the planet. Uh, is there anything you'd like to share? I can hear somebody typing. I think it's Janet. Janet, you have such an excellent speaker. Oh, I'm speaker. <laughs> I'm correcting the case because I wanted to apologize for Terry. Terry uh, Lynn, uh, Ling Kyle was supposed to come on today, and she had a medical emergency with a family member, and she uh, apologizes, and we're going to reschedule her. So, yeah, I was just correcting the show page because she's not with us today, but she uh, is so sad not to be here, but, you know, things happen in life. So, um, but go ahead. Have Ken come on and um Tell us, so uh, yeah, answer uh, TJ's question, and then well, uh, we'll go round table here, like in a panel. So that'll be good. All right. Go ahead. Well, can you can you actually? Uh, where's I don't know where you want to start, but we've covered some things. But uh, we need to get a linear timeline here. But you you went from NASA when I was down there, and my husband was working at NASA, and you and I established when we met. 
that we would t- uh, do a book and uh, pick up where William Tompkins left off as far as you and I. And you had his book when I met you. But uh, you want to start with uh, that versus going all the way up to disclosure when you went to – didn't you go to Washington? Were you one of the people at the original disclosures with Stephen Greer? Was that 2001 or – do you remember? Ken? Can you hear me, Ken? Ken? All right, Ken, you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. I, say, I just now. had it muted. Yeah, oh, okay. I, uh, I was getting feedback, and I was trying to avoid that. So, um, Thank you. Here, I'm supposed to understand all this high-tech stuff, but unfortunately, uh, it's it's been taken over by geeks, and sometimes I don't work very good as a geek. So, yes, back um, back in the day, back in the day of 2000, I guess about 2001, 2002, um, it was uh, Richard Richard Hoagland had gotten a hold of, of me and found out that I had maintained a a secret archive of um, documents and pictures and uh, evidence and everything else of everything we did during the uh, the Apollo program. And uh, his his position was we need to get you as public as we can because there's been a problem of people that want to keep the secrets and keep it hidden so long and then certain things happen and they disappear. And they're no longer with us. And now that I've turned 77, you know, I'm, I've still got a long way to go. I'm going to go to 180 to start with. So don't don't think 77 is old. So we'll be doing good there. So what we did is we went to um, Washington, D.C., went to the National Press Club, and where we presented um, evidence that there were alien bases uh, on the moon. And now we're talking about, oh, mercy. Um, gosh, how's that? Almost 20 years ago when this happened. We're finding out that w- w- those bases I was looking at might well have been part of our secret space program because there's there are two different events. Uh, if I can take a little time here, on the backside of the moon that we don't see uh, unless we've got satellites going around, which we do, and the big crater called Tsiolkovsky, which is basically 150 miles across, and in the shadow area of the way the moon was at the time, um, there's a cluster of five domes. And these are blended in pretty much into the, uh, the lunar surface and the area where it fit it. Whereas um, the other, one of the other best pictures of uh, bases on the moon are on the front side close to the edge of where it would be heading around the back. And they're all lined up just like we do in the military. We line up all of our buildings. In this case, there were five domes all lined up and then a road uh, track in between them as well as over and four very huge domes, which were most likely very large uh, antenna array for communication back with the earth and, and out into deeper space. So the things that I got involved with, I guess, after um, putting my time in 14 years at the uh, uh, NASA space program as a contractor. And um, now I'm finding that uh, those things that I was so proud of may not have been the first, the first ones to get there. Yes, I was very very pleased and, and opportunity to work with all the different astronauts that went to the moon. And, and now here I find myself, I was the youngest kid on the block back then, by the way, I was only 20, 26 years old. And um, so many of these, these heroes of ours that uh, took the rockets to go to the moon on the space program that the whole world was watching. Now, most of them have passed on and uh, Buzz Aldrin is one of the few, one of the few that's still left around that I work directly with. So um, if, if uh, Buzz is hearing this, say, 